Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Jared. Today we're going to be getting back onto the Civic and doing some work on this. So I've been having uh, an issue with this car where it's just got this misfire. I've pretty much changed everything on the ignition side, checked everything on the fuel side. I even changed capacitors on the ECU and it's still got this misfire, which I can't work out. Compression's fine. I did already pick up this coil pack kit, which we're gonna to install today. And I'm hoping maybe it will solve the issue. So what I got here is this Honda coil pack retrofit kit, which I picked up off Marketplace and it's still new. It looks like the guy opened the box, but it's still new. And it also came with this cover for the distributor as well as the K-series coils with the mounting plate. So essentially what this kit does is it eliminates the coil and the igniter inside of your factory distributor and also the rotor and the cap, which you don't need anymore. And it goes just to an individual coil in some degree simplifies the setup, but um, I guess for what I need on this car, it's probably overkill. This kit is probably more designed or tailored towards people that are forced induction that need more spark power because there is a limitation of the coil, the rotor and the cap in here um, for boosted applications. I've read as well that with the coil, it does give you a slightly smoother running engine as well so it helps with starting and also smoother idle and operation and also dialing in the ignition timing is a lot better one problem i had with the distributor before is it is quite common when you start increasing the revs is that the bolt that holds the rotor on can come loose and the rotor can fall off so what you can get is that the rotor actually has a bit of a wiggle in it which can give you a few degrees timing uh, advance and retard. So when this is turning around and you got the vibrations of the engine, you can get a slight change in the ignition timing for each individual cylinder, which can put it off. Whereas this, you can't get that. You are still using the factory pickup off the cam here for the RPM signal. Um, so there can be some variation in there but it eliminates the mechanical slack that you get between the rotor button and the cap. Like I said, this is probably overkill for what I want, but I'm hoping that this might solve my misfire issue that potentially could be in the distributor or distributors, the two that I've been trying. So the kit's not too difficult to install. As you can see here, you got four plugs for the K-series coils. You have two wires here, which I can't remember which one's which, but one's power and one's the RPM signal, which we're going to get from this two wire plug here. So that's simple. Then you have a ground for the coil packs. Again, quite simple. And probably the harder part is these four wires, which we need to tap into the ECU. The kit also comes with these pins, so if you do wish, you can unpin the connector and re-pin it onto the plug there, and also where the wires are going to add to the ECU, they're there. The kit also comes with this instruction booklet, but I've seen you can also download these instructions through um, the S300 Help Manager. They have all of this information on there. It talks about adapting those K-Series boots what are those pins for and also changing the settings on Honda. One important note there is you do need a resistor type spark plug as well. So what we can do to start is by, if you have your cover on here, you're going to remove your cover obviously by those four bolts or nuts holding it down. And then we can go ahead and remove our leads and also unplug the distributor in this case. So 
So you need to remove the nuts holding down this washer here. Otherwise it's gonna space off this plate too much and the coil coils won't actually reach the spark plug. So as you can see, they sit lower now. And then you can go ahead and throw in your coil pack. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to simplifying our distributor or removing what we don't need. So we can start by removing the rotor cap. Usually there's a bolt in here or a screw that you'll need to remove. And then you can take off that and also the cap. So in here we have the coil and the pickup for the RPM signal which we need to leave, this one here, and the igniter as well. So the igniter and the coil can go, but we still need this pickup for the RPM signal. So in here we've got our home signal still and then inside of this there is more teeth which gives us our individual pulses for each cylinder. So this wiring I'm just going to tape up and put back inside of the cover just in case I want to reverse the modification back to the distributor. So I moved that wiring harness around the side here just to make sure that doesn't come in contact with this pickup here. And also I put a cable tie through that hole there and at the end there so the harness can't move. I did notice with this speed factory cap that one of the holes lines up and the other one does not. And also this bottom one down here doesn't doesn't quite line up so I'm gonna have to drill out these holes larger so this cap actually fits on. So I got the cover on now as you can see I got two bolts in but this last one is still pretty far off you can see I'd have to re-drill it quite far but since it's just a cover it's not the rotor cap and even if it comes loose it's not really the end of the world I think I'm all right just with the two bolts in it. One thing to note is you will need some other bolts too because these ones on your old cap, they won't come out unless you're happy to destroy the cap to get them out, but I just used some different bolts on it. Next, we're gonna do some wiring off the car. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this pigtail off and then attach the wires on to these two, which are our RPM and power for the coils. So you're gonna go ahead and plug in your wire that we just soldered on to that plug there. And then you'll notice there is a ring terminal here, which is for an earth. And on the thermostat housing, there is a bolt here for the sensor grounds. So you're gonna need to take that off and put that one on there. I was just bolting the distributor back on and then I decided to turn the shaft and realized that it was quite stiff. And I noticed when I took the cap off that there was a little witness mark in here where it was hitting this shaft. So I've just used the angle grinder to take off maybe half a mil on that. And now this cap actually fits on there and I can turn the shaft without it binding up. I also put a bit of heat shrink just on the end of those two wires. 
um, that we cut off from the distributor and you can you probably don't even need to because it gets its power from this end of the plug so it, there's no power in there but just to protect them just in case there's a short on them so now you got your distributor back on and you've plugged in the other plug from the distributor the original larger connector and you've got that earth on and you've run the cable underneath You'll probably need to remove your battery and in this case I removed the fuse box so I can run the wire through the scrummet where the factory engine harness goes. And I just want to make this perfectly clear that this wiring you're about to see I did not do. I've just realized that the cars come like this and potentially maybe the whole misfire issue is coming from this wiring but for the purpose of this video I want to try and install this kit and see whether it's still the same. So under here you've got your ECU which is normally on the side there. I have the blower motor out because I was trying to diagnose this wiring but as you can see the previous owner has used these butt connectors to join all the wires together. But that's not what we're here for today. Um, we're here because of this harness which you saw we just put through that grommet there and these wires that were about to join onto the ECU. So the easiest part first, which is essentially plugging that box in. And then next we're gonna connect these wires. Okay, so now we're up, like you said, we're up to the ECU step. And the first one, remove the ICM DST wire from the ECU connector A22 and insert the orange wire into the same spot. So these instructions are not particularly great. So for example here it's saying that orange wire which if we look here none of them are orange. The only closest one is yellow with red. Um, Thankfully it comes over here and it says yellow and red is the A22 wire, the ICM wire. So okay, that makes sense. And then it has a picture of it here going on the top, which is the wire side. And actually if you look, uh, take a picture of the connector A, this is from the wire side. 22 is actually the bottom on the third one. And to confirm that 22 is ICM, ignition control idle, red and green. It says D-pin this when using OBD1 AEM. So now I come to my one and the third wire from the bottom is already missing. So what that means is I used one of those pins to add onto the orange slash yellow and red here um, and you'll need a pair of pliers like this which can crimp on non-insulated terminals you can do it with normal pliers if you're really finicky and take your time and then what you'll need is to open up open up this clip here which you can do just by putting a screwdriver in the side and pulling it open and then you can insert that wire which we just crimped into that spot. So now you can see I've got my yellow red wire in there. When you push it in, it only goes one way around and when it goes all the way in, it gives you like a click noise. So that way when you pull back on it, you know it's it's not loose. Then next with it still open, um, we're going to the next step, which is remove the ALTC wire from the ECU connector on OBD1, it's A16. So just confirming again, A16, alternator control. And looking along, it's in the bottom on the middle. So I come to mine, bottom, middle, and I don't have the wire. I don't know why I don't have the wire, uh, whether the alternator does its own regulation, um, but regardless, uh, lucky the kit gives you another uh, terminal that you can put on the wire. So I'm just gonna count that across and install the purple one. All right, so as you can see here, I have this mysterious red wire. I made a mistake with the purple crimp. So I just had another red wire with the terminal already on it. I put in there and then just joined it together. 
but does the same thing. It's still into pin 16, like I said. You can then close that up because we're finished there. And then we're on to our last few wires, which is we're going to solder in the power wire into A25 and the ground wire into A23. So again, checking on our sheet, 25 power wire, 23 ground wire. And up here, it's these top two here, which correspond to the yellow and black and the black. So what I done was I just used, I just used one of these blades and removed the insulation on the black wire, which is the ground, and the yellow and the black, which is for the power. Then you want to go and remove the insulation on the red and black wire. So now you can see the black wire and the red wire are soldered on and you want to go obviously ahead and throw some insulation on it and then you can go ahead and plug this back into the ECU. So with the key on, you want to see that you've got power on that box. So now we got to do some computer stuff. So you're going to need SM Manager on your computer. You want to have the key in the accessory position and then you're going to go online, download and we're gonna to go to parameters, miscellaneous, and then we're gonna go down to here, enable sync output on ALTC, and fully synchronize when cranking, Click select, and don't fire injector before synchronization, select, and then you're going to hit the upload button, and that's now updated. Alright, so as you just saw, the car was running and it fired up straight away, exactly like before. I didn't touch the dwell settings, just like it said in the ECU. But unfortunately, it hasn't fixed my misfire, which I think at this stage, it's either the wiring or the ECU. But how it failed, it was like a misfire that got slowly more and more common over time, or frequent, I think that's the word. So I don't think it would be a wire because it wasn't in intermittent. It was kind of consistently got worse and worse. Almost like spark plugs that were getting bad, but it wasn't that. I'm thinking there's something wrong with the ECU still. But overall, a review on the kit. The first thing that I'm really not a big fan on is the fit and finish of the kit. Like this heat wrap over it. It doesn't look very nice considering like this is the first thing you see when you look at the engine it would have been nice to have some better loom over it with some heat shrink ends i think into and also it would have been nice to have some numbers to say which cylinder was which you can kind of work out based on the length and in the manual it does give you a wiring diagram saying yellow blue brown and white are the ones for each coil so you can work it out as well. A review on the cap. I'm not sure if it's meant for an OBD2 cover, but again, yeah, that one bolt doesn't line up. And also the shaft hit the housing, which was a problem. Again, the, the instructions, they were pretty good. Just for your reference, there's this other one. This is from the internet, and it does give you those wires for each of the coils. And here it tells you the power and the tack signal from that plug and it's sort of a better layout rather than having to read through the instructions one by one. This here obviously wrong, the wires are on the wrong side of this plug here, it should be on the bottom. And also here where it says orange and it's a yellow and red wire is confusing too. But apart from that, you can install the whole kit. It probably took me two to three hours to do the whole thing and this is the first time i'm working it out and i made the video for you if you've watched this video now you can easily work it out for yourself it's it's pretty simple um just the instructions like i said they need a bit of fine tuning to make them 100 percent correct but overall if this video gave you some help give it a thumbs up like comment and stay tuned for the next video cheers